think it's important to know, first of all, what does a cult mean? Because a lot of people hear that word in a very negative way, and, and it has negative connotations because of Hollywood and a lot of other things. And really all a cult means, it's a Latin word, which just means obscure, not readily seen. It's veiled in some way. And in ancient times, they distinguished uh, what was a cult from what was mundane by saying that these were the inner mysteries. These were the things that, the processes behind things in nature. Whereas if you looked at a flower, uh, or a bud rather, opening into a flower, on the mundane world, people would just say, oh, that's a, you know, the bud's open and it's a pretty flower. But the occult principle behind that would be the mechanism. What actually happened that caused that to open? That's something unknown to someone who might just casually look at it and see it open and think, oh, you know, it's an open flower. But occultists were interested in the whys. Why do these things happen? Um, what's behind it? And in ancient times, of course, they believed that everything um, that was operating any of these things was a spirit. So they had spirits of nature, and these spirits were were seen to be the ones that opened flowers and caused rain and, and different things like that because our early ancestors were trying to understand and figure out what was going on. So they had all these ideas. It developed into a tradition um, which was an occult tradition and that tradition was such as herbs have certain properties. This herb has a magical property. This herb can heal. Uh, the serve has magical uh, influences over such and such. So this tradition grew, and over generations, uh, people preserved these ideas and wrote them down. And that's why today we have a body of knowledge, which is abundant in many books today, where you can go and look and see what all the traditional attributes of, an, of the herbs are, what all the traditional attributes of gemstones are, you know, that they're associated with planets or with properties or whatever. So these are the occult traditions that have come down. So occult isn't really the scary thing at all. It is just this idea that some things need to be looked at for what is behind it. What is the inner mechanism or the theme? Rather than just surface, accepting it on a surface level. Um, to give you a good idea of the difference between um, a mundane form of magic, which I call folk magic, and an occult tradition of magic, um, is the idea of, um, you'll read in some books that if you take a certain herb and you put it in your shoe and you go to court, you know, you'll win the court case because you have that herb in your shoe. That's a folk magic tradition. That's very much like people believing if you carry a rabbit's foot, it will bring you good luck, you know. Those are mundane traditions that, that aren't really rooted in any kind of occult principle. Because if you break down those traditions, the rabbit's foot wasn't particularly lucky for the rabbit. So why would it be lucky for us? Um, and the idea that if you have a root or an herb in your shoe and you walk around with it all day, you probably get really get a little more than an irritation to your foot um, than you would any magical you know, property. So these are kinds of the ways of looking at that. Now the occult tradition would be different. The occult tradition would be that if you were going to do that thing, say for example, have this root in your shoe when you go to court, the occult tradition would call for magic to be put into the root. And what is magic? Well, magic is just energy. It's natural energy. Um, but the old occultists learned ways of drawing that energy in, condensing it so that it's usable, and then directing it, putting an idea into the energy, and directing that energy off towards a goal. So the idea would be that if you were this occultist and you wanted to charge this this uh, route uh, to win your court case. Um, you would first draw the magic to you through techniques what we'll talk about later. Condense it, put the idea of justice, for example, just the thought of justice. And you might see that in your mind as, you know, those scales of justice. You might just see that image in your mind of these scales. And you really work that idea up and you breathe and you focus on the energy and then you put the idea of the thought of justice as you're staring at the root. And in your mind's eye, you sort of see that energy pass into the root. And there it is within the root now, the idea of justice. You put your hand over the root and symbolically seal that energy in. Now when you take the root, put it in your shoe and you go to court, when the judge is sitting there and all the other things are happening in court, <coughs> pardon me, all you have to do 
is think of justice. You just think of the scales. And whenever the, you're trying to appeal to the judge and, and show him your side of the case, or her, your side of the case, you would simply see in your mind's eye the scales of justice, you know, maybe sitting on the judge or on his head or something, or her head. And you're just sort of transmitting the idea. Now, you're not, you're not trying to force a decision out of this judge, but you're putting the idea of justice into his mind. So he's more willing to be just. He's more willing to listen than perhaps he might otherwise be.